Hi everyone, today we are recording a video for The Bargain by Liz Lockhead. Your learning intentions and success criteria are to understand and analyse the poem The Bargain, to explain what the poem's about and break down and examine the language. So the photos you see in front of you are of the Barras. Um, it's a really famous market in Glasgow. I'm sure the majority of you have, have heard of it. And the setting of our poem is actually at the Barras market. Um, and it allows for sort of deeper reflection on, on different ideas. So spend some time having a wee look at that, thinking about your own experiences, if you've ever been to the Barras, or if you haven't, even just thinking about the hustle and bustle of a, of a marketplace. So this poem is really typical of Lockhead. She's um, very pragmatic and she uses that she shows that in her craftsmanship as a wordsmith and she, she manages to create a meditation on a relationship that's reached a crossroads. Um, the speaker in the poem describes a day out with her lover at the famous Barrows or the Barras as you guys would call it market in the east end of Glasgow. The experience is used as a wider metaphor to explore and reflect upon a relationship. Um, the title of the poem refers to the bargains that the couple seek out of the market, but also the bargaining that occurs within any relationship, which is where the double meaning kind of comes from. So it, deems, it deals with relationships um, that seem to have reached a crossroads, which is quite common in, in our poems. Um, and she uses that day at the flea market to reveal those problems. Um, her love and affection for Glasgow comes in, and that's again links to other poems like View of Scotland, Love Poem, Some Old Photographs, all of these different places that, that you recognise in Glasgow come up in those, those different poems. It would truly make a great comparison for View of Scotland Love Poem because it deals with a romantic relationship against the backdrop of the city at a specific time of year too, so keep that in mind when you're preparing for your final exam. As usual, we'll use the same annotation key. Red will be word choice, green will be imagery and blue will be structure. And I'll try my best to explain what each sort of um, technique means in, in the context of the poem. Um, this is quite a long poem, so make sure you've, got, you've given yourself plenty of time to go through the annotations and write them in properly. The river is fast and high. You and I are off to the barrows, gathering police horses twitch and fret at the tron end of London Road in Gallowgate. The early kick-off we forgot has us 3.30, rubbing the wrong way against all the ugly losers, getting ready to let fly where the two rivers meet. So we start off here, the river in January is fast and high, and the word choice of fast and high really establishes the evocative setting of a cold and bleak January. It's probably been raining for, for weeks on end now. Um, we establish the, the sense of place when we see the Barrows Market, and we have some more word choice there in Twitch and Fret, which creates that really tense atmosphere. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, if you've ever been walking past uh, police horses or to a football match, and there, there often can be that sense of, of anxiety and, and tension in the air. Um, we move on down and the word choice here of the early kickoff we forgot has us 3.30 rubbing the wrong way. Um, they're, they're pushing against the the, um, the football fans, they're, they're physically walking the wrong way than, than the football fans are but also if you rub somebody up the wrong way it suggests a bit of tension, a bit of, um, a bit of almost um, of an issue there and you, you can interpret that in terms of the issues that are in the relationship between the couple that we'll learn about later on in the poem or you can interpret it just just the idea of, of feeling kind of um at, 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 at a crossroads or at a difficulty with somebody and um, we have the the image of getting ready to let fly shows the real unpredictability that's in the air and again reiterates that tense mood that can come with football games in glasgow um, and we've the two rivers meeting, which again is metaphorical here, literally it means the River Clyde, uh, but it also means the river of football fans making their way through the Gallagate from Celtic Park. This full first stanza should just make you think of the different places you know in Glasgow really and introduce one of the main tones of the poem, which is a sense of kind of, of fear of the unknown essentially, or fear of what might happen. January and we're looking back, looking forward, don't know which way. So this is quite a small verse in this poem. Um, it starts with the word January, um, quite an interesting way to start the, the sentence. And it really is again about that idea of reflecting at New Year. She, she's explained that in her other poems as well. Um, uh, you either reflect on the past or you look forward and it's a kind of strange time of year and it makes you question the decisions that you've made and what, what comes for you in the future. Here, the speaker has caused a question the future of a relationship, um, and that's clear from that juxtaposition of looking back, looking forward. Um, she, she doesn't seem certain about, about where that's going. Um, there's also quite a lot, there's a lack of punctuation in this, okay, there's only a few commas, and it shows an uncertainty about the relationship, perhaps. But the boy with three beautiful bakelite bush ladios, 
Bush Radios for Sale and Meadows Mini Market is button popping, station hopping. He doesn't miss a beat. Sing along, it's easy to every changing tune. So we have the alliteration of the Bakelite Bush Radios. Um, the alliteration pulls us away from the reflective mood and back into the setting of the market. It's quite a strong, plosive B sound um, that pulls us into that. And again, it's something that Lockhead's done before. She, she puts in things like, like the Bakelite Bush Radios um, that will, for people of a certain age, will, will evoke strong memories of, of, a, of a particular time. Um, the structural... The structural sort of intentional space and things she does down there with doesn't miss a beat doesn't miss a beat sorry sing along it's easy it's really um it's really intentional there and it's to play with the meter of the poem and again it's to show you how lasting and vivid that memory is in, in Lockhead's mind. Yesterday we are in love aren't we with the whole splintering city its big click, quick river wind wintry bridges its brazen black Victorian heart. So what if every other tenement wears its hearth on its gable end? So this verse here opens with a question and the deliberate use of today you should really take note of there. It really affects its meaning because it implies that there are days where the couple are not in love with each other. Um, again, starting with a question also shows that sense of uncertainty that we keep seeing in this poem. We have word choice of splintering, which is connotations of split, obviously breaking apart, and it introduces that tone of doubt that, that that speaker has about her relationship. Perhaps she feels like they're starting to splinter. Um, again, we go straight back into a big quick river, wintry bridges, brazen black, Victorian heart, all of these things that are evocative of setting. Um, it shows her affection, okay? She, she's thinking about these as, in a fond way. Um, if you're brazen, you're kind of forward and... Uh, the black Victorian heart means that she's she loves that city and she doesn't try to romanticise it by making it look really pretty or anything. It is what it is and she loves it anyway. Um, that last line there, so what if every other tenement wears its hearth on its gable end? Um, a tenement is obviously a traditional Glaswegian um, building. You see them all over there. Your hearth is the fire, okay, and your gable ends the sort of side of your house. These are all quite... Um, quite quite Scottish phrases to, to use there and again evoking that strong sense of place but it's also a pun or an image that you could say in there and um, she uses it to draw attention to her relationship. I'm sure you've heard you wear your heart in your sleeve which would imply that um, you kind of love somebody without reservation you're not scared to show your feelings but it also shows that she's perhaps leaving herself vulnerable to being hurt in a relationship. All I want is my glad eye to catch a glint in your flinty northern face again. Just once. Oh, I know it's cold and coming down. And no, we never lingered long among the ship bank traders. Paddy's market, underneath the arches, stank too much today. The usual wet dog reek rising from piles of old damp clothes. So her insecurities creep in here. She's looking for a, a glint in his flinty northern face again. Um, a glint kind of shows us that she's desperate for reassurance, uh, our insecurities are, are there, but the idea of flinty has connotations of coldness, but if you think of flint in terms of a rock, it also think, makes you think about strength and wisdom. She's really conflicted about her feelings in her relationship at the moment. She feels comfort and, and the, the wisdom and strength she gets from her partner, but she's also feeling that there's something, there's a bit of coolness between them. Um, we go further down there and it's again lots of memories and lots of really vivid depictions of what she can see using her senses and we also get a really really strong impression of what she can smell the wet dog reek rising from the, from the old damp clothes it didn't smell great um, it's kind of a negative smell which again brings us to, to that feeling that perhaps this isn't such a positive memory after all for her it's a sour smell in the air just as there could be quite a sour feeling between the couple. Somebody absolutely steamboats, he says, on sweet warm wine, swigged plain cover from a paper bag, squats in a puddle with nothing to sell, but three bent forks, a torn calendar last year's, and a broken plastic sandal. So we hadn't the stomach for it today. So the voice of the lover comes in there and creates a wee bit of humour. That word steamboats is something you'll probably recognise. Um, we, we have a description of, of the um, of the man sitting in the puddle drinking, um, trying to sell kind of useless items and it, you do feel pity for him um, for the poverty of this man's existence. You get a clear impression of some of the poverty that happened in that 
area of Glasgow um, and we also have that that bit at the end so we hadn't the stomach for it today it's very ambiguous and um, we're, we're not sure whether she means that they aren't in the mood for the market or they are th th they're maybe feeling a bit downcast a bit negative about their future um, they don't really want to confront that today we don't deserve a bargain then no connoisseur can afford to be too scrupulous about keeping his hands clean and there was no doubt the rare, the beautiful and the bugle beaded, the real antique, dirt cheap among the rags and drunks you could easily take to the cleaners. Again, we've got some double meanings in there, some imagery. Um, it suggests that a real bargain hunter needs to be prepared to root around for something precious to reveal itself. Um, and just like that, a relationship can also be like that. It can only be sustained through effort and hard work. You have to really look for the good parts in it sometimes. Um, we then have the contrast in word choice then here. You've got rare, beautiful, with dark cheek, rags and drunks. Um, again, reiterating that idea that worthwhile and special moments can be found in the ordinary if we just take time to seek them out. At the Barrows, everything has its price. No haggling, believe me. This boy knows his radios. Pure utility. And what that's worth these days. And anything with a decade of art deco, a rarity you'll pay, your, pay through your nose for. The man with the patter and not and all these curtain lengths and fiberglass is flabbergasted at the bargain and he says so in so many words so back again to to the the, the market and it's quite light-hearted again um you have that everything has its price she's very pragmatic she's very practical she understands that that's the way that it is at the market um and she's kind of been a bit funny believe me this boy knows his radios he's not willing to haggle on it and um, we go down to that sort of wordplay between fiberglass and flabbergasted um, again she's obviously enjoying the hustle and bustle in the market there um, and she's just describing as she sees it and, and describing the kind of experiences that she's used to there jesus every other arcade around here is a fire surround boutique and we watch the struggling families father carrying hearth home mother wound up with kids all the couples we know fall apart or have kids. So again, a memory juxtaposed with a, with an emotion there and a feeling about our relationship. Um, I don't know, again, if you've ever been to the Barras, but it's kind of suggesting that there's loads of the same shop, a fire surround boutique where you can buy like the outside of a fireplace essentially. But then that vision of seeing the mother and the father and the family buying something like that to go home uh, reminds her that actually that's not in the, that's not where they're at in their relationship. Um, you either have to have children or break up is what is suggested here and that's where she's probably the speaker feels quite torn at the moment and um, there seems to be only two paths available to her oh we've never shouldered much we'll stick to small icons for our home as long as they're portable a dartboard a peacock feather a stucco photo frame so that that inclusion of oh we've never shouldered much as the first line of that that verse there creates a really bitter tone um it suggests that perhaps maybe the lack of commitment in the relationship is what the issue is um we move down to the the dartboard the peacock feather the stucco photo frame it's a list of superficial items that suggest something artificial about their relationship it's kind of suggesting that their their relationship's less valid because they don't have children everything's kind of dispensing nothing ties them really together hence her insecurities we queue in a blue haze of hot fat for danny's donuts that grit our teeth with granules of sugar i keep losing you and finding you two stalls away you thumb through a complete set of manuals for primary teachers in the 30s we have um the that grit our teeth here um and the tension between them is cleverly alluded to in that pun um that should actually be that should actually be green in terms of gritting our teeth because it's a it's more of an image the idea that you're you're gritting your teeth there um you're, you're feeling something quite uncomfortable um we have the structure of losing you and finding you it's really simple and direct to the statement but it's also juxtaposition again um again reinforcing that growing doubt the speaker feels about her future i rub my sleeve on a rusty chinese saucer till the guilt shows through Oh, come on, we promised we'd not let our affection for the slightly cracked tra trap us into such expenditure again. Even if it is a bargain, we won't buy. The stallholder says I'll be the death of her. She says, she's see January, it's been the doldrums today. So just a wee bit of Scottish dialect in at the end there. It's been the doldrums today. It's been miserable outside. So again, just your strong sense of place there and just a really experience. There's nothing you really need to write, write down for that. And it's packing up time with the dark coming early and as cold as the river. By the bus stop I show you, the beady bag, 
and maybe the rosewood box with the inlaid butterfly and the broken catch. You've bought a record by the Shangri-Las, a pinstripe waistcoat that needs a stitch it just won't get, and a book called Inquire Within Upon Everything. We have that image of packing up time, again a double meaning in there. Um, obviously it's moving to the end of the market, but perhaps it's moving to the end and the decision time for their relationship. They need to pack up, they need to decide what's going to happen. Um, we have their bargains, they show each other the beady bag, the rosewood box, okay, the record that they've bought. But then we find out about the pinstripe waistcoat that needs a stitch it just won't get. She's not really feeling optimistic anymore. It's been replaced with that cold, hard reality. The box won't get fixed, the waistcoat won't get fixed, and perhaps the relationship will suffer that fate too. The raw cold gets colder. There doesn't seem to be a lot to say. I wish we could either mend things or learn to throw them away. So... The raw cold gets colder as connotations of coolness, obviously, but perhaps detachment, perhaps it's becoming more painful, okay, the idea of it raw, the exposed emotions that she's feeling. Um, the short, direct statement of there doesn't seem to be a lot of stay, uh, a lot a lot to say, sorry. Um, their worries are so clear that language is even unnecessary at this stage. Um, and then we have that rhyme at the end here, which adds that air of finality. Um, I wish we could either mend things or learn to throw them away. But it's also a, a really clear image that sums up the, the metaphor of the, of the whole poem. Um, well, both of them seem to be aware that the relationship's reached a pivotal moment. They seem unwilling and unable to find the energy to reinvigorate it, just like the bargains that you get at the, at the market. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that poem. It really is just about about really that, that conflict that often you find in a relationship between two people and about how you move forward and and um, the, the backdrop of the, the Barrows Market is a perfect place to explore that. Thanks for listening.